In a couple of moments, we'll begin. Um, even though uh, uh, we're assembling uh, everyone who's going to uh, participate, we have just a distinguished group. Uh, but we're going to start with uh, my deputy chief of mission. I'm cheating because he knows that this isn't in the script. Um, he's actually supposed to begin all of this, but it wouldn't give me an opportunity to say how fortunate I am to have gotten someone uh, to step in, uh, become the chief deputy chief of mission with me here in Luxembourg, a country that I love, uh, second only to the country that I love most, the United States of America. And we're here to celebrate our birthday. And we're very proud of our birthday. And so we want you to be a part of it. Uh, and we thought there was no better way than to celebrate it on the 50th anniversary of man landing on the moon with someone who actually walked on the moon. And I get goosebumps when I even think about that. But with that said, now what I'd like is just if, if we could get folks to move. Uh, if I were in a Baptist church, I'd tell you to move from the back pew to the front pew, but I'm not. Uh, so if you'll just move this way, because this is going to be kind of the center, and we're really heavy on the right, and we're really light on the left. Uh, so if we could just move in that direction, and then I'm going to, in a moment here, step down, and then uh, my DCM, Casey Mays, will come up and we will uh, start the program. Uh, we're going to make sure that we have uh, Senator Wicker and uh, who I, I see is a cue. So we're going to be in really good shape and then in about a moment we'll see uh, St. Buzz come out. Uh, and I, I encourage you uh, when Buzz comes up, uh, show your appreciation for the accomplishments of a man who has done unbelievable things. So with that said, Casey, it's all yours. We are joined this evening by many special guests, some of whom have offered to give brief remarks. First, though, it is my pleasure to ask Paul Kirby to introduce the host of tonight's event. Bonsoir, je m'appelle Paul Kirby. Bienvenue à notre célébration du jour de l'indépendance des États-Unis d'Amérique. J'ai l'honneur de vous présenter mon oncle, son excellence, Monsieur Randy Evans, ambassadeur des États-Unis au Luxembourg. Well, how do you top that? I mean, really, think, think, think about this for a moment. Of course, my staff right now is panicking because they're realizing none of this is in this script right here that I'm supposed to read to all of you. <laughs> but I thought what a better bookend would it be than to have the next generation and the hero generation all on this stage with me, the generation that saw it happen. What a great honor. What a great opportunity. Um, and I want to thank every single one of you for coming. I tried to catch you when you came in the door. Um, I will be quite, I will be quite uh, specific, and I'm, trust me, this is not going to be very long because I know who you're actually here to hear from. Uh, but I would be remiss if I didn't recognize the most important person to help me be here. And that's my lovely bride, Linda, who's right over here wearing beautiful blue tonight. I'm also quite humbled because so many of the, my colleagues and friends from the US Congress are here tonight. You know, I went to work for the Congress in 1979. I met most of the delegation that is here. Many of them don't even remember me because I was an intern at the time and I started to work. I eventually worked in the speaker's office for two consecutive speakers. 
uh, the 105th through the 109th Congresses of the United States, was the general counsel, uh, and then went on uh, to try to practice a little law here and there, and now I'm the ambassador of the best embassy in the world. I have the best team. They, they do fantastic things for everyone uh, that we work. And as I look around and I see my colleagues from the embassy, uh, I say to, I told them when I first started, I said, I got good news and I got bad news. I said, the good news is no one here will work harder than I will work. I think they can all attest. I said, the bad news is I will not be satisfied to be an embassy. I will only be happy if we are the best embassy in the world. And you can tell how hard we work at it. We worked at it with a memorandum of understanding on space with Eddie Steiner, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, are you still here? He was here earlier. Yes, he's right here. The Deputy Prime Minister, I owe him. He and I sat down over a table in a restaurant and mapped out an agreement of what we could do in space together. Did we not? We did. He regretted it. <laughs> Many times, but we did, and I know that uh, Deputy Prime Minister Felix Brazzer is here. I saw him. I know that the Prime Minister will be joining us a little later. That's great. But first and foremost, let me start with this. If you're a member of our United States Congress, first of all, let me start with the Senate. If you remember the United States Senate, if you would, uh, could you just come so, is it okay, uh, Senator Wicker, if everybody comes up here so that we can see? Senator, I know Senator Cornyn's here. I mean, we, th these, are, these are some of the most key and influential people that we have. And, I, and you should brought your lovely brides. Not that I have any offense to the two of you, but if your brides would come up. good shit. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, good. So if you would, a round of applause for our senators from the United States. And just stay right here for a second. And then if our members of the United States Congress, those of you who are, want to make your way up, I know Tom Graves is here, I've seen several, Alderman is here, stay, uh, the, the, uh, the majority, and by far, uh, the majority leader, if you could believe this, in our Congress, there's the Speaker, and there's the majority leader. We have with us tonight the majority leader of the United States House of Representatives, Denny Ware. Mr. Leader, thank you. <laughs> Senator Cardin, you could see, and there are others, if you could get, come on up. And, and the big part of this is, every single person on this stage is here because we're celebrating the birthday of our country. And we're proud of that. We're all proud of it. And, and I cannot tell you, come, come on. You're going to sit, all right. <laughs> so if you, that's right. Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee. And you cannot say the word Memphis without sounding Southern. <laughs> so if everybody would give a big round of applause to our Congress. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming up. Um, now, so we have ministers of government. I would also be remiss if I did not honor, I'm not going to have them come on stage, the diplomatic corps of Luxembourg. You, you cannot imagine how effective and talented the diplomatic corps is uh, that we have here of uh, many colleagues. We have the Greek ambassador, the Chinese ambassador, we have uh, the, the Italian ambassador, we have the British ambassador. I would be remiss though if I didn't always single him out. He knows, oh, the Romanian ambassador. So one year ago, Senator Wicker, I, I was here. I just started. I didn't know where anything was. When you're over 50, what is the most important thing that you need to find? The bed, the, the toilet. I'm on National Day. I have no idea where anything is. 
and I find the ambassador from Poland. Uh, where is my good friend from Poland, the Polish ambassador? There he is, come on up, so everybody can see what, and I say to him, he thinks that I'm about to ask him a, a like the deficit or denuclearization of Korea or something of enormous magnitude. And I lean over to him as the United, brand new United States ambassador, and I say, where is the toilet? <laughs> and he was so kind that he actually uh, said, I'm over 52. We went off and there we went. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time out of your evening. Thank you for celebrating our country's birthday with us. Uh, thank you for being friends of America. Uh, we consider Luxembourg to be among our very closest friends. And to have you all here celebrate with us means so much. And it means much to me, it means much to our colleagues, and it means much to our country. So with that, thank you, and I know we're going to have a great evening. Thank you, Ambassador. It is now my privilege to introduce United States Senator Roger Wicker. Senator Wicker has served in the U.S. Senate for more than 12 years representing the state of Mississippi, and prior to that, he served seven terms in the U.S. House of Representatives. Among his many leadership positions in the U.S. Congress, he chairs the Senate Committee responsible for many of the issues at the heart of U.S.-Luxembourg relations including commerce and space. That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. Is that all? Yeah, that's good. Uh, we don't need uh, long remarks from members of Congress, but le let me say thank you, Mr. DCM, uh, and Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much. We are celebrating a historic event, Fourth of July, the Independence of the United States of America. Uh, together, uh, Codell Wicker, Congressional Delegation Wicker, and Congressional Delegation Hoyer, are making a bit of history today, this week. This is the largest bipartisan delegation of senators and House members in history ever to visit Luxembourg, and we're proud of that. This, this is a, it's, it's a special event in history, 1776, our Constitution later in 1787. That's special to us. But as we've been around the two delegations, as I say, House and Senate, Republicans and Democrats, we've celebrated something else this week. And that is the Transatlantic Alliance. The people that have stood for freedom and rule of law and order and peace for decades and decades. We're trying to keep that going. We stand for that. Today, we appreciate all of our friends from around Europe and from around the world who celebrate that with us. Thank you very, very much. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you, Senator Wicker. We're, we're greatly honored that you are here tonight. We're also greatly honored that the Majority Leader, Steny Hoyer, is here tonight. And I'll keep the introduction short as well. Welcome. Please. <laughs> Senator, you set a bad precedent. Buzz Aldrin, it is a, indeed an honor to be here with you, sir. Rarely do you meet somebody who is one of the very fewest of people to have done something that nobody else in the world has ever done. He has seen the globe from afar. This small, tiny planet in many ways on which we live. I am so pleased to be here with all of you. I was appointed chairman of the Helsinki Commission in 1985, just a few years ago. And I bring you greetings from Speaker Pelosi and Leader McCarthy, who is the Republican leader of the House of Representatives. 
I have a speech here, but I'm not going to give it because Wickers, he's going to give me a hard time if I speak too long. Mrs. Evans and Ambassador Evans, thank you. Thank you for representing our country uh, in such an outstanding way at this important place. Uh, thank you for the service you have given to our country through the years. Uh, we honor you and we honor your staff. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, be escorted by Marissa today, uh, a wonderful representative of your staff, as I'm sure all are. We celebrate the birthday of America, but in another very real sense, we celebrate the birthday of one of democracy's most extraordinary documents, the Declaration of Independence, 1776, 243 years ago. Some brilliant men, there would be women today, set to paper a profound concept. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men, and today women, surely would be included are created equal. Three words are created equal. And those men set to paper that that was self-evident. And I tell people it may be self-evident, but it is not self-executing. That's what the final act is all about. That's what this process is all about. That's why you and I as parliamentarians are here today to talk about the premise that all are created equal and endowed not by law, not by constitution, not by a majority vote, but by their creator, by a higher power with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I just came from Denmark, the center of our assembly. I met there with, uh, briefly with Spencer Oliver, our former Secretary General. I met uh, with the Foreign Minister, the Defense Minister. And we were supposed to go to uh, Ukraine from there. Unfortunately, our plane thought it wasn't interested in going to Ukraine, so we didn't go. But I talked for 45 minutes with the new president of Ukraine, President Zelensky, about his hopes and his vision for a better Ukraine, a non-corrupt Ukraine, a Ukraine that honors human rights. A Ukraine that is not occupied by a foreign power inconsistently with the Helsinki final act. And I came today from Hungary. And so we are here gathered in Luxembourg one more time. And I would ask you to remember a former president of the Parliamentary Assembly who is facing great health challenges. So tonight, say a prayer for Alcee Hastings and for his health. The first and only African-American who has chaired this Parliamentary Assembly. The Helsinki Final Act is about implementing that premise that we are all created equal. Let us be up to that task. God bless you, and God bless America.
Thank you, Congressman Hoyer. If you will indulge me, there is no introduction that does, does uh, justice to the hero and legend that sits next to me. But I do want to introduce him tonight and to acknowledge really his greatness and to thank him for being here. The moon landing, which we are commemorating, was not just a historic achievement of the 20th century. It was a defining moment in human history. One of the central characters of that historic achievement is Dr. Buzz Aldrin, an extraordinary man even before he traveled to space. After finishing among the top of his class at the US Military Academy at West Point, he went off to the Korean, Korean War, where he flew 66 combat missions as a jet fighter pilot. At the end of the war, he transferred to Europe, in fact, just across the border to Bitburg, Germany, where he spent four years commanding a squadron of F-100 Super Sabres. He matched his military success in the world of academia by earning a PhD in astronautics from one of America's most acclaimed and competitive institutions of higher learning, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. NASA saw in him their future and wisely brought him in to join the burgeoning astronaut corps in 1963. Six years later, astronaut Buzz Aldrin strapped himself into the tip of a Saturn V rocket, which stood four times the height of the Philharmonie, four times, and he blasted off into history. He remains a living legend and an inspiration for the ages. Please join me in thanking Dr. Aldrin for joining us in Luxembourg. of distinction, my vice president over here. You may have wondered why I came up on the stage to salute during the national anthem. I'm very proud that a senator from Oklahoma, Senator Inhofe, had a, a bill passed in 08 that allowed, not mandated, but allowed veterans of military service dressed in, not a uniform, and, and not a hat on. Didn't say anything about bathing suits, but uh, <laughs> gave them permission, as they wish, to salute inside, outside, terrible involve the uh, Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem. And I have been doing whatever I could to remind as many servicemen that this is their choice to demonstrate the proud that they feel for having served in their country. And also to demonstrate to other Americans and people throughout the world exactly how proud they are of taking on the obligation. I uh, have a brief set of remarks. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to hear. congressmen and senators tells me their history and I, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I flew over Luxembourg. Maybe not intentionally. <laughs> I flew over North Korea intentionally. <laughs> Sometimes we even wandered across the river into Mongolia. <clears throat> I 
I'm proud of the opportunities that have been given to me, and I'm proud of my, my father, who pioneered as an early aviator in this business of uh, flying airplanes. It gives us a freedom to see the world, to have that freedom to maneuver. And with rockets, we can now see the world from even further away. We're pretty constrained. We can't move quite that much around as an airplane can. But it gives us a, a great view uh, of our planet. And I'm hoping that gradually more and more, not just astronauts, not just military people, but rather ordinary citizens, they may have to deplete their bank accounts in Luxembourg <laughs> by a little bit to be able to do this. And we've called these people tourists. Uh, I like to rename things. Tourist is just not an appropriate term. It is a personal, visual experience, whether it's suborbital, in orbital, out past the moon's orbit, where you can look back and see the Earth and the moon on the other side. We're in a cruiser and a Mars cruiser. And step by step, we will that Bezos will, I think, be allowing this opportunity uh, to come to us. Since leaving NASA and returning to the Air Force and then retiring from the Air Force, I've had to sort out exactly what I was going to do. And it kept coming back to what do I know how to do? I know how to admire the freedom of space. I studied a lot about it. I've been there. But we have to do more. And my expertise is not rockets launching. And it's not landing. That was Neil's job. I was watching them, making sure not to uh, disturb his thinking. But my, the first words from the moon were, contact light? That's when we knew we touched down. A little boom from the landing gear hit the ground and bent, and that gave us a signal. In a week or two, we'll be remembering Space Week from the 16th of July until the 24th. And, and I hope that that becomes more and more recognized as the combination of a national endeavor. But I think I even saw a replica of the plaque that we had on that front landing dude here. We came in peace for all mankind. And as other members of the crew have noted, when we toured around the world after getting out of quarantine, to keep you people from getting the germs that supposedly we had. We toured around the world, and it was remarkable how frequently we saw a sign that said, we did. And, and that really warmed us up to have the feeling that, that everyone felt that they were 
a part of that endeavor, and I hope that that spirit comes together. <clears throat> We've had a few ups and downs, sometimes in orbit, sometimes back down again, but in retrospect, I've not really been satisfied of the decision making and the outcomes of some of the programs that we put in, in place. When we went around the world after uh, our flight, we called it Giant Step. And I think the program of the future should be termed Next Step Space Alliance. That's an alliance of capable, not just space agencies of, of governments, but capable entities who can contribute to uh, that effort. I've spent a lot of time myself enjoying it because when a lot of people ask me why am I doing what I'm doing I came up with the answer several years ago when I was 17 years old I took an oath to serve my country and I believe that that's what I've been doing ever since whether flying over Luxembourg <laughs> or, and, and I was thinking with these members from Congress, uh, they are a part of where we go. There are enablers and there are hurdles. And I think it is very essential that we eliminate the hurdles and join together. And, and I would use of five letters D. We need to discover what we want to do. We need to discuss it. Then we need to decide. Make a declaration. And then do it. Thank you all for coming. Dear Ambassador, dear Ms. Aldrin, dear guests, I also just saw some of my colleagues from government and also officials, dear members of the House of Representatives, dear Senators, dear friends of the friendship between the United States and Luxembourg. I really would like to thank you for the opportunity to take the floor here today, because it's a special year. We celebrate the 50th anniversary of your mission. I'm not yet 50, <laughs> but I'm getting closer. So um, for you, you have to realize that at that moment, all the space adventures and experiences made a lot of children dream, and still today. For you, it was a part of a job, of an experience, of an amazing experience. But for millions of people in the world, it was a dream. It was images that we were able to follow, where we lived the fears, the experiences to joy, 
every minute with you. And I'm very proud that my government, under my colleague Etienne Schneider, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Economy, wants to continue that dream still today. And a few weeks ago, we had the visit of Secretary Ross to Luxembourg under the initiative of our ambassador, very active ambassador in Luxembourg, where we together put the energy to continue the space industry and the space mining project that we have together. We know that it's still, for some people, a dream, but it becomes a reality tomorrow. And so I am very proud that together, through this friendship, we're able to have this kind of huge projects between the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg and the United States of America. I want also to remember, because some of you were not there a few weeks ago, when we were together at the American Cemetery, which is not far away from here. We celebrate this relation on economy, on research, on space. But we should not forget that, not far away from here, thousands of young Americans are buried. And if I'm able to speak freely in front of you today, it is because young Americans, young Canadians, young Brits died for our liberty. And I can promise you that nearly 99.9% .9 of them didn't even know where Luxembourg was on the map. But they came for us. And this is something we should never forget. And I just come back from Brussels, we had long meetings. I'm happy to be able to be here today because I was not sure it, I was not still in Brussels tonight. And being able to speak in front of you through this peace project that we have, which is Europe, which since 57, we are able to build things together. And the United States and Europe, and especially Luxembourg, are partners. We need each other. And I believe that since these relations, since these, these sacrifice of young American soldiers, we should never forget that peace is never granted. And we should be thankful to these nations who helped us without knowing where we are. So I believe in peace, I believe in friendship, I believe in relations, I believe in exchange, and I would like to say thank you to the American companies present in Luxembourg, to American friends in Luxembourg also, and to the embassy to promote this relation between our two countries. Thank you very much for your attention, and happy Independence Day. Thank you, Prime Minister. This concludes the formal part of the uh, evening. Please enjoy drinks. Could I invite the sponsors for tonight's reception to the stage for a photo? Thank you. <laughs>